invite us all to stand for the national anthem of the Commonwealth of Dominica. Please remain standing. Our thanks to Shamala Christian and Aria Bopia, students of the Convent Preparatory School, for leading us in the national anthem. At this point, I invite Mrs. Shanda Coffey Johnson, a parent of a student of St. Mary's Primary, to lead us in prayer. Good morning, everybody. Let us bless ourselves in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bow hands. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this day. We want to thank you for your many blessings that you continue to bestow upon us each and every day. We want to thank you for our lovely country, Dominica. stakeholders, parents, teachers. Lord, this morning we lift up this handing over ceremony into your hands. We pray, O oh God, that you will continue to have your way within this country, that even as we go through this pandemic, you will continue to make us resilient as we continue to find innovative ways in bringing across education to your citizens, Lord. Father, you said, let the little children come to you. And so this morning, we just want to place them into your hand. Continue to give unto them the gift of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Father, we lift up teachers into your hands. We pray, O oh God, that they will have the patience to continue to deliver, even in these uncertain times, using various platforms, Lord. Father, we pray that the parents who are here with us and those who are out, wherever they may be, that they may continue to trust in their children and continue to encourage them. Father, be with the leaders in the Ministry of Education. Father, we, they are the ones who are the policy makers and they are the ones who discern what will happen in our country in regards to education. Father, we pray that they will continue to trust in you and that they may continue to steer the education on the right pathway. Be with us, O oh Lord God, we pray once more. In your precious name, amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our thanks to Mrs. Coffey Johnson for quite a lovely prayer. Please be seated. May I acknowledge the Honorable Melissa Skerritt, Parliamentary Representative for the Roseau Central Constituency, Honorable Octavia Alfred, Minister for Education, Human Resource Planning, Vocational Training, and National Excellence, the Honorable Senator Oscar George, Minister for Telecommunications and Mrs. Chandler Hyacinth, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education. Mr. Roland Royer, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of the Digital Economy. Mrs. Margaret Jules Royer, Education Officer for the West District. 
Other education officials, Dr. Jeremy Jean-Pierre, director of the ICT unit and head of the library, Mrs. Venanda Raymond, Mrs. Laurel Morrow, principal of the St. Martin Primary School, other principals, teachers, students, parents, And welcome to our handing over of educational devices ceremony here at the Windsor Park Sports Stadium. To start us off this morning, I'd like to invite the Honorable Minister for Education, Honorable Octavia Alfred, to address you. Please welcome Mrs. Alfred. Honorable Melissa Skerritt, Parliamentary Representative for the Rosa Central Constituency. Honorable Oscar George, the Minister in the Ministry responsible for telecommunications and broadcasting. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Mrs. Hyacinth. Education Officer for the West, Mrs. Roye. Other education officers, principals of all schools present here today, teachers, students, parents, good morning. Good morning. It gives me the greatest pleasure to be here in Roseau to participate in yet another ceremony to hand over devices to our students. Over the past two weeks, the government of Dominica has distributed over 2,000 tablets to students of primary schools across the island with the assistance of the Global Partnership in Education. The devices which will be distribute to our, distributed to our students today are being provided to the Ministry of Education from the Ministry of Digital Economy. We thank Honorable Kassani Laville graciously for his efforts. We continue to thank our development partners who have supported Dominica's efforts to facilitate our children's learning during this most uncertain period in education. This government is the education government. And I will pause one moment to say to our students here, there are some experiences some of us had that you will never have. I shared some in some other communities. This morning, I share with the students of the St. Martin School. I attended St. Martin School for two years. And when the common entrance results came out, my name was nowhere on the paper. I guess because my surname was Bonnie. Because at that time, your surname mattered. Because I couldn't understand and I sure I'm sure that she wouldn't mind if I call her name. How oh, Heather Felix had made it, and my name was not on the paper. And we used to get almost same marks. We were partners. It's 90 for this one, 92 for the other one, but I was nowhere to be found. So when the results were given, my friend Heather and I went to the washroom. We held on to each other, and we cried. Because she was going and I was staying. But you know, when I went to the first form, the principal called the grammar school principal and said, I have a child, they're wasting time. Do you think you have a space? He said, send her. Somebody from vocational section went with me. Mr. Hubert Charles gave me an interview. And he said, if I don't find a place in first form for you, can you do second form work? I said, of course. What guarantee do I have? I say I can read and write, and I know mathematics. That year, Mr. Hubert Charles had seven first forms. So I was in one seven, because he was looking for place for students who he felt were intelligent enough to do secondary school, but they didn't make it on the common entrance list. I want to say to you, St. Martin School girls and the others here, this will never happen to you because this Labour Party government has made sure that every secondary school child will have access to secondary school. We call it universal secondary school. 
This government is committed to the education of Dominica's children. And once again, you have seen this on display in the last past weeks. Unable to return to face-to-face -face learning due to the prevalence of COVID-19 in our communities, we have, since October 4th, used a virtual modality to engage our students. To address the issue of access, government introduced last month through the NTRC, the Net for All, a facility which I think Honorable Oscar George will tell you more about. To ensure that every child can participate in online learning, we need internet, but we also need devices. We have traversed the island, making stops north, south, east, west. Now we are in central to ensure that our students have devices. I want to single out the efforts of the officers of the Ministry of Education who have devoted long days to the organization of this effort. Your commitment to the children of Dominica is commendable, and I am sure our parents appreciate that you have gone the extra mile in the past weeks to reach every child in need. Please put your hands together for the officers. Senator Oscar George has also been a valuable partner during this process. I thank him for his leadership and commitment to the task to ensure that we reach our goals of placing tablets in the hands of students in urgent need by the time November rolled around. I want to also thank your pal rep, and I think you owe your pal rep a big thank you, because I'm saying to you that sister, there is nothing soft you know when you see she wants something. But I want to, be, I am glad for myself this morning, because I'm sure when all of Honorable Melissa Skerritt will meet me after 12 o'clock today, it will not be about devices for students. So I think you need to give your parent a round of applause for her persistence in ensuring that you have what you need. As government and as Ministry of Education, we recognize that we must equip all our students to participate fully, and this is what we are about. We are empowering each child, each family, to fully take advantage of all the possibilities that exist with virtual learning. Since the start of this pandemic, our teachers have adjusted their methodologies, updated their skills, and grabbed the opportunity to adopt new methods of reaching each child. The dedication of our teachers is at the core of our success thus far. We are fully aware that the modality of online learning is creating difficulties for many students and parents. Therefore, while we equip you with the tools that your children need for learning, we are looking with hope to the new school term and the prospect of our children returning to the physical classroom. This will be dependent on our ability as a people to control the recent spike in COVID-19 cases which we have experienced. Therefore, I thank all those who are here present who have so far gotten vaccinated, and I pray that their part in limiting the spread of the virus will be taken into consideration. I encourage all of us, parents, teachers, and others, to become vaccinated to protect our health and that of our children who are not old enough to be vaccinated. It is only through collective actions that school will be able to defeat this virus and return to face-to-face -to -face learning. I take this as your contribution to a rapid return to face-to-face. -to -face. I encourage the recipients of the devices to take the best care of your learning device. These tablets are not meant for use as a toy. It's not a toy. Its primary purpose is not to play games or to watch YouTube. It is for your schooling, so use it wisely. Be a responsible digital citizen because your footsteps are there forever, even when you delete certain things. We encourage schools to continue to implement their IT policy and to incorporate the do's and don'ts for responsible digital citizens in your HFLE and social studies classes and also in homeroom. 
students, private information should remain private. Just how your parents not want you to talk to strangers and to give them information, there are lots of strangers on the internet who will be looking to get information from you. Private information should remain private. Be respectful and polite online. I am sure your teachers will take time to educate you more about being a digital, a responsible digital citizen. Parents, thank you for your support and patience. Continue to assist your children, but don't just give them the answers. That's happening you know, with online learning too often. That the teacher asks the question and you hear somebody in the background whispering the answer. That 100% is not your child 100%. That 100% is yours. And I think you are making things very easy for the teachers because now they have no need to call you after one to do a one-on-one -on -one with your child because your child got everything correct. Remember, your children are in school. So careful how you enter the classroom. The cameras are on you. And please respect class time. Don't disturb the student. Don't ask the student to run any errand for you at that time. And he know he cannot go to the fridge to take anything for you because he's in class. Students, take care of your device. Make the best use of this learning tool. I'm not going to tell you to have it as a baby, but I expect you to take care of it in the same way that you take care of your dictionary and your calculator. Because if next week reports are, we drop the device and the screen showing lines. Can I have another one? I don't know if your power rep answer, what your power rep answer will be, but mine will be no. Therefore, I encourage you to take care of it. Even if it came to you at no cost to you or your parents, somebody is paying for this device. So take care of your device. Now you have no excuse not to submit your work on time. God bless you. Jesus loves you and I love you too. Good morning. Our thanks to the Honorable Minister for Education and parents, students, I hope you've taken note of the very practical advice as to how you make use of your devices. As you heard from the Minister, the Parliamentary Representative for the Roseau Central constituency, Mrs. Melissa Skerritt, has played a very active role in ensuring that this event happened and that you're able to access your devices today. At this point, I'd like to welcome Mrs. Skerritt to address you. I would like to recognize the presence of the Honorable Octavia Alfred, the Minister of Education, Human Resource Planning, Vocational Training and National Excellence, the Honorable Oscar George, Minister of Telecommunications and Broadcasting, other cabinet police, Mrs. Chandra Hyacinth, uh, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Mr. Roland Roy, the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Digital Economy, the media, principals, teachers, and more importantly, the students today. Convent Prep, St. Martin Primary, and SMP. Welcome and good morning. Good morning. Today I am truly heartened to be participating in a presentation of this magnitude. The eager faces of you, the students, as well as the relieved expressions of your parents and your teachers and your principals tell me that we are certainly meeting your needs. The continuing distribution of, dev of devices is part of government's vision for a dynamic Dominica, which empowers our citizens, in particular the youth, with digital skills for success in a rapidly advancing digital economy. 
This academic year started off with much anxiety for many stakeholders. However, all concerns were immediately dispelled with the seamless transition proposed by the Ministry of Education. That is, our students were advised to remain at home with lessons being taught online. This COVID-19 pandemic has made it abundantly clear that all students should have full access to educational resources to facilitate constant learning, whether at home or in school. Education remains one of the major pillars of success for a nation. And it is for these reasons that the government has launched an island-wide device distribution program for students who do not own the needed technological devices. Over the past few months, the government has made great strides in closing the digital divide that threatens to expand due to the pandemic. But we believe that no child should suffer from digital exclusion due to lack of a technological device or inadequate internet access. Unfortunately, for those who do, who do not, the government has ensured that all schools and all community centers are outfitted with free internet access and the recent offer of a $10 internet package offered and subsidized by this government. It is expected that every home in Dominica will be connected to the internet. To the provision of these laptops and tablets, this government is ensuring that every single student is in possession of this very important tool to access online learning. Therefore, no child is left behind. Government has also removed the financial pressure placed on the parents who would have had to secure these devices on their own. And so far, over 2,000 devices 2,000 children have received new devices from this government to engage in virtual learning. And we will continue to identify students at the secondary and the tertiary level who are indeed in need of devices to facilitate learning. No, sh no child shall be left behind. This government has had an impeccable track record of providing for every Dominican child, and we do not intend to move away from this policy at any time. Once again, we are making a tangible intervention to ensure the creation of access to quality education for every child at every level. It underscores our commitment to the creation of a highly educated population. Our goal is to train citizens who can help our society achieve higher levels of social welfare and economic growth, higher levels of employment, and a stronger, more cohesive society based on sound values. We aim to expand opportunities for our young people, to promote civic values that strengthen our society and create avenues for the growth of science, technology, and innovation to bring our country in line with the developed world. In the Rosso area, we are also supporting education with plans for major construction of two secondary schools in this coming year. We are currently reviewing plans for the expansion of the Dominica Grammar School, which include this will include a new wing, auditorium, all-purpose facility for sports, and green space for the promotion of an agricultural program. The Goodwill Secondary School is also on the cards, and government should be in receipt of a schedule for construction very soon. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this means that more and varied options exist for you who will soon be entering into secondary school. We remain committed to the provision of modern educational spaces 
where all students can thrive and explore their interests. My dear students and parents of Rosa Central, and indeed, all of you here who are receiving these devices, please care for them and use them for the purpose which they are given. Please attend all scheduled online classes. Be punctual. Use online websites for learning support. Submit well-researched assignments and ensure that you adhere to all learning guidelines provided by the Ministry of Education and your school. I wish to commend the sterling leadership of my colleague here and friend, the Honorable Octavia Alfred, Minister of Education. She has provided and continues to provide in the advancement and implementation of Dominica's Labour Party policies and programs as articulated and promised in our manifesto. She has brought a job to the job and unfailing energy. Madam Minister, you are doing very well and congratulations. I also wish to recognize the efforts and contribution of Honorable Oscar George and to say that your leadership in telecommunications in Dominica has been delivering a number of positive benefits to our people. And I'd like to tell you all a secret. My husband, the Prime Minister, you know he's a tough boss. However, once he can speak very highly of you, you know that you are doing extremely well. So congratulations. <laughs> I would like to wish everyone a productive academic year. And let us all pray that the new school term offers the ability for us to remain, to return to our physical classrooms. I know some of you are missing your friends and want to return to school, but I do know that some of you actually, I see some heads shaking. Some of you prefer the online school, right? Yes, I see that. Because you can leave your, your device and you can run in the fridge and look for snacks all day long. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what my children do. So, so they love the online school. Thank you for coming out this morning. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thanks to Honorable Scarrett for her remarks. And once again, we take note of the words of advice that she has left with you students to make the best use of your new devices. The Honorable Oscar George, Senator Oscar George, since we started the distribution of devices about, about two weeks ago, has played a significant role. He's taken a leadership role in the exercise and we thank him for his leadership. And he is here now to address you. Please welcome the Minister for Telecommunications and Broadcasting, Honorable Oscar George. Thank you very much, Master Ceremonies, Ms. Dura. I want to first recognize the presence of our Minister of Education, Honorable Alfred, who continues to do such an excellent job in education in Dominica. I also want to recognize another very hardworking, strong woman, the Parliament representative for Rosa Central, Honorable Medisa Skerritt. My cabinet colleagues, here with us today, Honorable Dennis Charles, the MP for the Sufria constituency, and Honorable Shakira Hippolyte, the MP for Russo South. Also, we have with us the PS in the Ministry of Digital Economy, Mr. Ruan Rui, the manager for the Digital Transformation Project, Ms. Jean-Pierre, the principals of the convent prep, the St. Martin Primary, and SMP, our teachers, our parents here with us today. Thanks for coming our broadcasters here with us, and last but not least, our students who look so beautifully dressed in their uniform today. Good morning to all of you. I want to first apologize for the absence of our Minister for the Digital Economy, Honorable Cassani Laville, who had a family emergency this morning and had no other choice 
but to give attention to that. I'm sure he would have loved to be here, to be part of us. And I just want to say that it was through his efforts and the efforts of his ministry and his peers in particular that we are here today. It's through the efforts, and I believe they deserve a round of applause for that. My fellow students, access to connectivity and the internet is one of the top priorities for this government. And furthermore, connectivity has never been more important given the advent of the COVID-19 pandemic. This is a pandemic that has resulted in a paradigm shift in the way we live. All of us, especially you, our young students. None of us imagine that the day will come when school will be conducted fully in the comfort of our homes. These days are here with us, my fellow students. And it's for that reason, it gives me great pleasure to speak to you here today. I am always delighted to speak to you students because when I stand here and I look at you, our students, I see the future of our love country, Dominica. I see our young and upcoming engineers, our doctors, our IT specialists, even future ministers of government, and future businessmen and women. And I believe it's very important that you develop your innovative ideas, your skills, and your knowledge at a very young age while you are at primary school. And these are all very, very important to the development of our country. And this is why this government, which I have the pleasure to be part of, has made it our duty and give special emphasis on your education, students. This is why we have taken a conscious decision to invest heavily in education from early childhood all the way up to tertiary education. And we can all attest to this, from the provision of uniforms, from books, from free transportation, from the elimination of fees at the Dominica State College, to scholarships to further your studies. And when you return, we will always find a suitable job for you in order that you make income and enhance your standard of living. This is the commitment from the Dominica Labour Party to our students. <laughs> and what we have done, students, is that we have integrated technology as the foundation to all the activities and also to transform Dominica into a more digital, friendly society. And some of you students may be asking, but what exactly does he mean when he say a digital, friendly society or a digital economy? By this, we mean ensuring that every student have access to the internet by building our digital skills and empowering students like yourselves to be able to use your devices. This is what we mean when we say that, they, that we are transforming Dominica into a truly modern economy, making sure that every single student in Dominica can excel, making use of the available technology to assist them in their everyday lives. We also want to transform Dominica into the technology capital of the region by effecting necessary changes, by embracing our opportunities and fostering the right attitudes to accept the cultural shift towards digital transformation. And students and parents here today, this transformation is not only limited to education. We are doing it all across government services. For the past year, we have focused on securing the $76 million investment to invest in our transformation process. We have also focused on structured planning by conducting a digital readiness assessment. This details how prepared we are focused on transformation. We also prepared our digital strategy, which is a roadmap to developing the various tech sectors in the digital economy. This year, we are focusing on various exciting endeavors also. Our work online, Dominica, where we have trained over 120 young people in gigs and jobs online. Some are already receiving as much as 800 US per week. Can you imagine that? 800 US dollars in just one week just because of the training they receive from our programs. 
We will again be training another group starting in January next year. Today, we are formally handing over digital devices to the Ministry of Education. We have procured 8,000 at a cost of US $1.3 million. This, my dear friends, is absolutely transformational in Dominica. It will change the way you will learn and address issues of inequality. This administration believes that every child needs a fighting chance. And this is another way we are demonstrating our commitment to socioeconomic needs and the needs of this generation. We will also focus heavily on transforming the health management system in Dominica with investments in a health management system. This is going to change the healthcare sector and the way we manage and administer healthcare. And this is a good complement to our investments in the physical infrastructure, such as the hospitals and our healthcare centers, ensuring that we can digitalize our healthcare services so you don't have to leave all the way Marigot or Vicas and come to Roseau just to access simple healthcare. You can sit in your village or in your health center and virtually access this healthcare. The Caribbean Digital Transformation Project will focus heavily on digital skills and technology adoption to the sum of US $4.2 million. The goal is to better equip individuals and businesses in Dominica for jobs and economy and the future to spur innovation and productivity. The project will also cater for the continuation of a workforce ready digital skills program with the goal of supporting training for employment opportunities. In addition to the digital skills program, the project will provide paid internships uh, for young adults and youth who have received digital skills training. Funds have already been allocated to assist young adults and youth who are interested in creating small businesses that focus on digital innovation. So you see, this government is embarking on an ambitious plan to transform this nation through the digital economy. This is exciting and will benefit all and improve our everyday transactions and make it much easier and convenient. For you, learning will become more convenient and you all will have access to more information, more skills and technology to give you a better start. So today, here in Dominica, we all can say that our students have an opportunity to exceed their true potential through the use of ICTs. And this journey begins right here at the primary school level where we can embrace connectivity and technology for a better way of living. Currently, my dear friends, the world is being faced with a deadly COVID-19 pandemic. And I know that, especially students, you would rather be in a physical classroom to interact with your friends and your teachers. However, the advice that we're getting from the Ministry of Health is it is not safe for you to do that. So as a government, what do we do? Do we say that we will cancel school and let valuable time pass? No. The Ministry of Education has given it a lot of thought and they have implemented the online modality. And obviously, the online modality will, will be faced with challenges. I know that there will be anxieties, um, parents, you know, teachers, it's a new concept, you know, students, the, the, the attention span might be short. But I believe that if we all play our part, we can successfully implement the online learning modality. Our Minister of Education, the PS, the education officers, our teachers, and the entire team has worked tirelessly to implement a number of measures to facilitate online learning. And I want to just put on record my sincere appreciation for the efforts from the Ministry of Education, led by our Minister of Education. <laughs> I believe that in, in difficult times, um, we see what somebody is really capable of. And I believe that administering online learning is no simple task. And I can clearly say, and I'm sure that every single one of you will support me in saying that 
our Ministry of Education has done a fantastic job in administering online learning. And one of the areas that posed a challenge for many students across Dominica was access to the internet in certain areas. And in other areas, the issue was the cost of the actual service. So there are instances where there may be internet in a particular community, but then a particular household just cannot afford to pay the monthly cost of that internet. And over the last year or so, government have invested heavily in bringing internet connectivity all across Dominica. A few months back, we connected the entire East Coast um, through a subsidized um, plan for the, for the NTRC. And the issue, of course, still remains a lingering measure which we had to find a real solution for. So just last week, through the NTRC, government was able to launch the Net for All initiative, where we target students that do not have access to internet at their homes to facilitate online learning. And what we have done is we have made it very easy for the students to access learning. The main issue was cost. And we are saying that for only $10 a month, um, we can bring broadband to these homes. And if we all know, the cost of basic internet service in Dominica is around $125. So what we are saying is that the balance, which is $115, government will take up that cost for you. Just because you have a student and we are committed in ensuring that your student have access to online services. And all of this we are doing, all of this we are doing, my friends, is just to ensure that your students are equipped and in a better position to learn and excel. And these devices we are making available to your student here today is part of our contribution to the academic development. It is intended to be used by your students for school-related activities. Please take care of your devices, students. Protect your screens and always keep your device in a safe place. And parents, I see many of you standing outside, and my words of advice to you parents is always monitor the progress of your student. I know that you may not be able to use a device, but by just speaking to your child, by just hearing from them, by just engaging them, that goes a very long way in ensuring your child can succeed. And our children these days, they are very intelligent, but please continue to keep them in check, and let's continue to ensure that they use the devices only for purposes of education. So students, I'm happy for you today. I urge you to take your education seriously. As I always say, study hard, it pays. Um, read a lot, at least target reading a book per day, um, because when you become educated, you can achieve anything in life. And as I always say, today I'm here addressing you students as a minister. Um, tomorrow, it could be any one of you here students addressing children um, in Roseau as a minister. So take your education seriously because you never know um, where you can get to. And always take advantage of the opportunities that this labor government is providing to you. Um, we are committed to this. It's something that will continue far into the future um, because education is the way to go. I again want to express high praise to the Minister of Education and our hardworking teachers and also our education officers. Um, they play an important role and we will continue to support them in Dominica. The devices we are distributing here today is a step in the right direction. It is an investment that is worth about 300 US per child. So that is what we are doing here, parents. We are ensuring that your child can get a device that is worth 300 US dollars as an investment in their education. And with them, we will expect to see an improvement in the online learning modality and the digital divide, which has been a problem over the last um, decades in the Caribbean, can be something of the past. Because many times we, we travel abroad and we say that, you know, America is advanced, you know, they have so much nice technologies and we don't have. So that is a problem which we're trying to eliminate to be able to compete when it comes to technology with any developed country anywhere in the world. So students, I'm very happy for you. Take care of your device and continue to take your education 
very, very seriously. I thank you. Our thanks to Senator Oscar George. As you heard from all three of our speakers, we heard from them how government is empowering students in schools across Dominica to access online learning and to set them on the right path towards a sound education and a sound future. The Minister of the Digital Economy, or rather the Ministry of the Digital Economy, has procured 8,000 devices for distribution to our students to facilitate their learning. And today, the ministry will first make a symbolic handover of devices to the Ministry of Education. I invite the Honorable Oscar George to make the symbolic handover to the Honorable Minister for Education, Octavia Alfred. Of course, these devices will then be handed over to our students who are here today, and our students will be identified later for receipt of the devices. Before we move on to our main purpose for being here this morning, I'd like to invite Mrs. Laurel Morrow. She's the principal of the St. Martin Primary School, and she will deliver a vote of thanks. Thank you, Ms. Duran Smith. Honorable Octavia Alfred, Minister for Education, Human Resource Planning, Vocational Training, and National Excellence. Honorable Melissa Scarrett, our parliamentary representative. Honorable Oscar George, Honorable Shakira Lockhart and Honorable Denise Charles. P.S. Hyacin, um, also P.S. Ronald Royer. Education Officer for the West, Mrs. Royer, and other education officers present. It is my distinct pleasure to thank you for your presence here this morning for this wonderful donation of devices for the students of St. Martin Primary, Convent Preparatory, and St. Mary's Primary Schools. These schools are government-assisted schools, and we are elated that you have treated our students like all other students in Dominica. Our schools provide for students whose parents live or work in Roseau. So we have a wide cross-section of students. Thank you so much for your words of encouragement, Honorable Oscar George, for informing us that there are other devices on the way so that those parents who did not get today, they will get there soon enough. We thank you for the presentation that you are going to make here today. These learning tools will allow our students to grow effective, self-directed learning skills. Technology makes students smarter. No matter what we say, when a child of today, we call them digital natives, are given a device, they know how to use it. These, these arm devices will enhance their learning and it will make them effective and productive. The students will become more productive and our teachers will become more productive because all students will be on a level playing field. The research now shows that a flipped classroom is now being advocated. And that means that no longer is the teacher 
the holder of all the information. Students can research information. So the classroom can now be used for activities rather than for placing things in students' heads. So we thank you so much today for your presence. Parents, we thank you for being here. The media, we thank you for your presence and ensuring that those who are unable to make it today will be able to follow some of you live and some of you will do that after. We thank you for, we thank all the persons. I saw persons carrying the devices, fixing the chairs, doing all of those things. We thank you so much for whatever part you played in this function. We are very grateful and all our parents have expressed that desire to have devices and so we, they are thankful as well. So my word of thanks is not only on my behalf, but also on behalf of all the parents and students who are gathered here this afternoon. Thank you so much for your patience and for your commitment to education. I would also like to express that you tell the minister, our prime minister, that we are also grateful that he has seen education of our children as a priority. For those of us who have been in the system for so long, we are happy that our children are able to see their full potential. And we are so grateful for that. Thank you very much to all of you, and have a great day. Good afternoon. Our thanks to Mrs. Laurel Morrow, the principal of the St. Martin Primary School. At this point, we move on to the distribution of the devices, and I call on the Education Minister, Mrs. Alfred, Senator George, the MP for Rosa Central, Mrs. Skerritt, Mrs. Shakira Lockhart-Hippolyte, and Honorable Dennis Charles, please join us as we present devices to our students. Students, teachers, we will begin with the St. Mart St. Mary's Primary, and I will call according to class. Teachers, you will simply escort these students to the front to receive their devices. We want to do this as quickly and efficiently as possible. Are we ready? <laughs> SMP Grid K Gold. Are we ready? Let's stand before our teachers make our way to the front. In the meantime, Grid K Blue, prepare yourselves to move to the front. So let's go. Grid K Gold to receive your devices. Teachers, you are invited to escort them along. Don't leave them on their own, please. SMP, grade K, blue, please come forward. Grade one blue. Followed by grade one gold.
Grade one blue, grade one gold, please proceed to the front. Grade two gold, please get in line. Grade two gold, grade two blue. Grade three blue, grade three gold. Grade three blue, grade three gold, SMP. Grade four gold and grade four blue. Grade five gold, grade five blue, please get in line. Also grade five red. And grade six red and grade six gold, please get in line. Students, the boxes you are receiving contain the tablet and also a protective shield. So please look out for that so you do not discard it in error. After you've received your devices, and that applies to all of us, return to your seats and you will wait for the Ministry of Education officials after the ceremony so that your device number may be registered. Two one A, two one B, two two A, and two two B. Students of grade three one A, three two A, three two B, please get ready to make your way to the front. Three one A, three one B, three two A, three two B.
grades 41A, 41B, 42A, and 42B. Grades 51A, 51B, 52A, and 52B. And the students of 61A, 61B, 62A, and 62B to conclude the St. Martin Primary School. <laughs> students of Convent Preparatory, please get ready. Convent prep, pre-K students, teachers, please escort the students of pre-K. Followed by the students of kindergarten love and kindergarten joy. The kindergartners will be followed by students of grade one love and grade one joy. Students of grade two, love and joy, please get in line.
Students of grade three, Hope, and grade three, Faith, please get in line. Students of grade four faith and grade four hope, please get in line. Grade five faith and a grade five hope. And grade six, faith, and grade six, hope of the convent, convent preparatory. <laughs> Students, as previously stated, please remain in your seats. After you've received the device, you're not yet dismissed. We thank the Honorable Minister for Education, Octavia Alfred, Honorable Melissa Skerritt, Honorable Oscar George, Honorable Lockhart Hippolyte, and Honorable Charles for assisting us with the presentation of the devices. Please, students, there are quite a few of us here. We just want to ensure that every one of you received a device. If you did not, Please come to the front and pick up your device. This is why you're here. We certainly don't want to miss anyone.
please remain in your seats, students. You will be approached by officers of the Ministry of Education. I'd like to thank all of you for joining us this morning on behalf of the Honorable Ministers. Thank you so much for being here. Congratulations on your new devices. May God bless you all. Good morning.